Okay, another supplemental lecture. This time I'm going to talk about crustaceans. Uh, remember we are dealing with the arthropods, so phylum arthropoda is the larger group. The crustaceans uh, include kind of a diverse um, group of uh, arthropods, <clears throat> but most are marine. And we're going to talk first about um, a rather important group that you might be familiar with, and these are a group that are called decapods or the decapoda, and they include crayfish, lobster, shrimp. So they are named um, because they have 10 legs, and actually I put legs in quotes because in reality they have um, antennae that are actually included in that. So I think there's um, eight, eight legs plus there's, so it includes This group live, uh, some are, live in marine environments, some live in fresh water. Or moist environments, I should say. A couple of body features here. They also have uh, two main body parts. They have a cephalothorax uh, and an abdomen. Their exoskeleton is actually um, a little harder than the other, some of the other arthropods. It is hardened with calcium carbonate. up here. So uh, another feature of this group, um, the exoskeleton that covers the cephalothorax is one piece and it's called oops, the carapace. Another characteristic is that they have two pairs of antennae. And one last feature is that the mouth parts um, are called mandibles. And their function is to bite and grind food. So with the extra hardening um, due to the calcium carbonate, these um, mandibles tend to be a little stronger uh, than uh, some of the other arthropods.
Okay, um, I want to show you one, one thing. Oops. I don't have um, a decapod to show you. However, uh, I do have uh, something that once housed a uh, decapod. Um, and I don't know how well you can see this, but this is the um, home, I guess you could say, of a crayfish um, that you can see that it uh, was living in a mud environment. Our front um, field is sort of a wetland, uh, and so especially when it rains a lot, we tend to get uh, a lot of these popping up. And basically, um, you can see the little pieces that the crayfish has dug up from the mud and uh, placed on top of it um, to uh, form a, a little burrow. And this is where the crayfish, uh, again, they're called mud bugs sometimes, um, but you can find them in streams and lakes and so on. But also keep in mind that they can be found in a, a wetland type area. All right, a couple of other groups uh, that are included in the crustaceans that may not be as familiar to you. And I'm gonna grab an eraser real quickly. I'm going to, so this is gonna be number, point number three. So all of this was about the decapoda, um, but now I'm going to uh, just mention some other uh, crustaceans that you may not be familiar with or may not know that they are crustaceans. So, uh, other groups. The barnacles are actually crustaceans. Um, they build a, a sort of a shell of calcium carbonate. And then they essentially hide uh, inside uh, that structure. They, oops, uh, they can actually close and open um, the, the opening of the shell. So typically at high tide, uh, the shell would be open and the barnacle um, has um, two pairs of antennae and they're very feather-like so it will um, insert its antennae out into the current and that's how it feeds. It actually traps um, organisms uh, in the feather-like features of its antennae. Uh, in low tide, then it will close that opening and just hang out until the tide come back, comes back in. All right, so that's the barnacles, which are kind of an odd group. Um, in addition, there's uh, a group of crustaceans that are called copepods, and these are uh, rather small not quite microscopic, maybe about two millimeters in length. Um, they are uh, primarily marine and they are uh, very important in the food chain of aquatic ecosystems. And I said marine, actually there are freshwater uh, species. 
So these, um, again, they're in the food chain. So they actually feed on uh, bacteria, photosynthetic bacteria, uh, and phytoplankton. 